In this video, we're going to take a look at the extrude object and see how we can create 3D geometry from splines. Now, these splines can be um, objects we create directly in Cinema 4D using any of Cinema 4D's spline tools or a spline we bring in from uh, Illustrator. Okay, so let's kind of see how we, we do this. I'm going to start with my text spline, which um, you know, was just a, a text shape here uh, that I made editable, so it, it, it's very representative of a, a path we might bring in from Illustrator. And what I want to do is create an extrude object. Once I've created that extrude object, I need to give it a child. Okay, so I can put my text spline inside. And I want to point out that all of these green objects are generators. Okay, and so in order for them to work or create geometry, um, we need to make sure we place an object inside or, or give them a child. Okay, so we can see my text object is being extruded. It's being given depth. And now we can take a look at the different options here. Okay, we have movement, which controls the, the depth of the extrusion, and we can give this movement on any of our three axes, okay, or any combination, so whatever, whatever we're looking for. All right, this hierarchical option is really important, so I definitely want to make sure to show you guys that. Um, in order to show it to you, I need to create a second spline for us to use here, and so I'll just create the star shape, maybe place it right there, let's adjust the number of points. All right, and place this inside the extrude, and let's see what happens. Okay, well, now the star is being extruded, but the text is not. Okay, if I make the text first in this list, now the text is being extruded, but the star isn't. So the default behavior of the extrude is that it only wants to extrude the first thing inside of it, its first child. If I want to alter that behavior, I need to turn on hierarchical, and that's going to tell the extrude to look in inside and look up and down its hierarchy okay so we could have multiple paths in here we could have these objects grouped together and they could be inside of a null and it would still work okay because if i have splines in a null like this and hierarchical isn't turned on it's not going to extrude anything because it's trying to extrude the null but the null doesn't have anything associated with it okay it's not a spline so that's where this hierarchical option comes in really really important all right, but let's get back to just the text. Okay, moving on from the object tab, we can switch to the caps tab, and this is where we can add fillet caps. And these fillet caps or bevels are really useful for adding a lot more detail when it comes to our lighting and materials. As it is right now, our bevels are gonna be controlled the same for both the start, which is kind of the, the front here, or the end, which is back here. Okay, and if you want to have separate controls, you just need to turn that property on. Okay, we're going to start with the round bevel shape here. In order to see this, we do need to increase the size a bit. And depending on how large your text is or, or whatever spline you have inside, uh, you may need to adjust the size accordingly. Uh, typically, shapes that come in from Illustrator come in very, very smallly, very small. And so you will want to use a very small size here uh, or else your letters are going to start breaking. Okay, now we can see with round, it is doing a pretty good job of rounding here. Okay, so not only can we uh, adjust the size, uh, but we can also control the number of segments. The more segments we have, all right, the more rounding we're going to have. So with segment set to one, we get this very almost chiseled, hard edged look. But the second we start increasing this, we can um, see how this starts to round out. Okay, we also have this extend shape, which is going to make the bevel larger, okay, when it's coming out here. All right, so you can see how it's extending it. And so it's nice that we have this extra layer of control because in previous versions of our Cinema 4D, we, we really couldn't. Okay, we would have had to make our text editable, convert it to polygons uh, in order to, to kind of give it um, our bevels this extra, extra depth. Okay. So aside from round, we also have curve. And curve is really useful because we have, you know, our spline graph here that we can work with. And so this is essentially a profile, uh, which is going to allow us to create all sorts of interesting curves and shapes here. And I can use control to add points. And, you know, however I shape this, that's going to be the shape of my extrude. And you can see we can get some really, really interesting things here. Okay. 
So the, the curve option gives us the most control uh, in the most options when it comes to creating custom bevels. We also have solid, okay? And so we can see that's kind of doing some weird things. And to really kind of get an idea of what it's doing, we're gonna turn on um, the, our lines uh, display mode here. Okay, and I'm gonna to need to turn down the size a little bit. And you can see it's adding these extra edges, but it really isn't changing the shape of our geometry. Okay, and in fact, if I turn down the segments, you can see really this is what we're getting. Okay, so it's not changing our geometry. This is really meant to be used for other purposes. Okay, whether uh, maybe we're going to try and throw it into a subdivision surface uh, or some other, you know, type of um, generator or deformer that's going to alter this geometry. Okay. We also have step and step is really useful. Okay, because it allows us to control how many times this is going to step in. So it's going to be extruded in and then out. All right, and we can control the size of that just like we could with our other options. We can also control how many times we get that step pattern by increasing the number of segments. Okay, so two, I'm gonna have two steps, three, so on and so forth. All right, now the problem with just using step is that we, we're still not getting any curved edges here. And so we are gonna be losing some detail when it comes to lighting and materials. All right, now there are quite a few ways around that. Uh, we could experiment with the um, bevel deformer to try and help us with that, or we could use some of our presets here because they have um, some presets now in R21 that give us a lot more options and uh, do have some of these stepped patterns that do have that rounded edge. Okay, so you can see all of these different presets here and notice how when we have those these curved edges, these rounded edges, we get a lot more detail in our reflections, comp reflections compared to kind of uh, this one that doesn't have any rounded edges. Okay, so we got basic rounding, um, we got, you know, uh, flat and rounded. I'm not going to go through all these, but I, I do want to point out that we do have, um, you know, that four steps. Okay, and it's similar to that step pattern we were looking at before, but here we now have curved edges. All right, and it's those curved edges that are going to catch our lighting and make our reflections that much better. All right, and I want to also point out that all these presets are just using that curve graph we saw previously. All right, so we could very easily go in here and, you know, delete these if maybe we only needed two and set this up in such a way that, you know, works for our purposes. All right, so now I have something like that. So kind of a, a play on the step pattern, but I also have that nice angled edge here. And if I really wanted to, I could come out, curve it even more. All right, and just keep playing with this till I get exactly what I want. All right, so really cool stuff here. These presets are great. Definitely recommend experimenting with them and then also seeing what's happening here in our curve uh, graph so you can get a better idea of how it works and hopefully come up with your own custom curves. All right, lastly, we have selections. And previous, we used, we used to have some of these selections built in okay, that we could apply materials to, uh, but you had to kind of know these selections. Here, we can save out these polygon selections just by checking them on. And so I could turn on, you know, the start cap, uh, maybe the shell, and now I have these polygon selection tags that I can use for other purposes, all right? The most common of which would be applying materials to them. And just to show us that really quick, I'll create a couple of materials. So, you know, maybe we'll create like a gray one, and a blue one and if i apply these materials to my extrude all right notice how we're only seeing the material that is to the right since that material is technically on top but i can come in here and in that texture tag drag in whatever selection i want and that'll be the only place we see that material so r1 is only going to be on the rounding and so the, the gray material will be everywhere else i could take my second selection tag and place that on the shell. And so that's just gonna be on kind of the outsides here. So once again, in R21, we have a lot more options when it comes to applying custom materials to our extrudes without having to make this extrude editable and make polygon selections ourselves. Okay, so that's a look at the extrude object. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another video soon.